This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room at the ESMO 2012 Congress happening now in Vienna. We are joined by Dr. Eduardo Kazaf, past president of UICC, past president of SLACOM, and ESMO's Developing Countries Task Force. Dr. Kazaf, is it that as a culture we have a stigma, a judgment, a negative judgment about someone who has pain? Regarding uh, specifically morphine access, there, there are a lot of cultural barriers, even with doctors. The people, uh, I think that uh, it is a very common belief to relate uh, morphine with a dying person, and that is not always the case. Uh, regarding the, the access to the medications, this is also a contradiction. Morphine is very cheap. So you have uh, usually uh, bureaucratic barriers. Uh, there is no uh, really interest from the pharma companies with uh, morphine because it's, it's, it is not a very, very profitable drug. You have also limitations uh, at uh, governmental levels. As an example, in Argentina, it is incredible, but the morphine uh, regulation is not in the Minister of Health level. It's at the Minister of Foreign Affairs because they have there a department for, for dangerous drugs and the morphine for uh, medical purposes is uh, managed by, by the same office that manages with the DEA all the problems with, with uh, drugs and criminal uh, situations. So there are a lot of uh, contradictions that makes for doctors difficult to, to use the medications, for patients to obtain the medications. In some countries, this is unbelievable. You need to go to the police station in order to get morphine because it is not available at the, phar at the pharmacies of the, of the hospitals. So the, this is a very complex issue. And the reason for this survey was to have a mapping of the current situation about the access to the drug uh, at the international level. Could you track differences in mentality based on the countries? The concept of global things, it's a little bit uh, curious. The world is not global. If you are having some uh, conversation in China or you are having dinner in China, uh, the, all, all the, the, the structure of, 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 the, of the meal is different. If you are in the Middle East uh, uh, and you are in a McDonald's in Riyadh, I was in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia three weeks ago, you have a line for ladies at the McDonald's and a line for, for men, and they cannot order a McDonald's together. Uh, if you are in some parts of, of uh, South America, uh, in, the, in the Brazilian jungle, for example, the communication and the information and the access to, to doctors is not so easy. Even in rich countries, we can mention, for example, the U.S. 50 million U.S. citizens are uninsured. And uh, an additional 40 million, they think that they have an insurance, but in the case that they have a an important disease, they will realize that the insurance is quite limited. So do you have pockets of uh, population that are really in a very bad situation in poor, middle income, and even in rich countries? I think we need to change the association from what people perceive as end of life care to yes. quality of life care. Completely because this is a complementary action that must be in parallel with all type of cancer interventions uh, at the personal level, at the scientific level, but also this is a moral responsibility for the society. Thank you very much, Dr. Kazaf. Dr. Eduardo Kazaf, past president of UICC, past president of SLACOM, and ESMO's Developing Countries Task Force. Thank you very much for, for distributing this information to patients and to the public in general. This is very important for us.